I am Desh Ratan Nigam. All right, I apologize for that, Mr. Nigam. Uh, how do you see what's happened in uh, the court today? The court, essentially the Supreme Court saying uh, that let's put this under re-examination appropriate. I'm quoting what the CGI has said. He says appropriate to put provisions under abeyance. Uh, one thing is very clear. The entire issue before the court is misuse of the law. Not, not the uh, not the law itself. What they are saying in during this period, the misuse of law should not be done. However, it has never happened in the history, in all of the history of jurisprudence and in the Supreme Court, that the law is just a state which is existing for a very very long period merely because of the misuse. The entire uh, you know laws can be put to uh, stay, like Dowry Act, Domestic Violence Act. All of them are put to mis misuse. Therefore, this is a very kind of, I am rather very shocked and surprised. Mm. For the misuse of the law, the Supreme Court and the various courts are there to deal with it. So what happens in the meantime, that suppose tomorrow the law is uh, by the parliament is upheld with minor exceptions. All then right. what will happen to all those cases uh, which have been committed in the meantime? Mm. Now even otherwise, the law al already has been melted down, read down from the pre-independence era by 1962 judgment of Kedar Nath Singh case. And that is, they have brought the concept of violence, incitement of violence with spoken or written words under the uh, section 124A, which is which we call as sedition. Therefore, uh, the law itself has been made suitable for a post-independence India. It is merely the misuse. The misuse is something that we have to look for. And the mm. law cannot be stayed merely because there is a misuse of the law. So I am rather perplexed with the kind of observations which are being made in Supreme Court. Right, I think Mr. Kothari wanted to uh, speak on that. Yes, Mr. Kothari, I'm going to come back to both of you gentlemen. Uh, Mr. Kohli, back with us on the phone line. Mr. Nalan Kohli, how do you see what's happened in the Supreme Court? In a sense, it does seem that the court has said that this law should be placed under abeyance. Well, it's a very positive development. Because you have to see it in context of uh, Narendra Modi ji's government having filed that affidavit, that short affidavit which says that the government wishes to re-examine the issue. It has to be seen in the context that Modi ji's government has uh, removed some 1500 such archaic and old laws. It is India's 75th year of independence. Almost 25,000 unnecessary compliance issues have been removed. So, I mean, the attitude of Modi ji's government is to see that life becomes easier for Indian citizens. That view, the Honorable Supreme Court and the Chief Justice's bench has accepted that, yes, let the government re-examine it. In the interim, the Honorable Court has also said that fresh cases should not be filed. The old ones can perhaps be kept in avail. Mm. And that's also has to be seen from the fact that law and order is a state subject. And therefore, it is the state police which uses the law to file a case against somebody else. So therefore the states have to take note of this. And the larger issue as I see it in all in all is a very, very positive development. Right, Mr. Kohli, uh, you know, I just also want your opinion on what the Supreme Court has said. It's, as it has advised courts uh, to expeditiously dispose of sedition cases which have been uh, registered and also told them to halt action under Section 124A till there is a re-examination. Your, uh, your views on that? 124A is the sedition uh, provision in the Indian Penal Code. Now, please bear in mind... This was examined several decades ago by a constitution bench in the Kedar Nath Singh case. So what has been held is that the, uh, the provision itself is valid. It is not ultra virus the constitution. So it is valid. Now in the next question arises that if the provision is valid, it, is it being misused? That could apply to any section of uh, the Indian Penal Code or any other statute. For example, there are a set of people who may say that uh, a certain other uh, provision, for example, some people say the rate provision is uh, misused, some mm. say dowry is misused, but the counter viewpoint is that after all the dowry provision 498A is needed because there are also real incidents of dowry, demands and dowry deaths. And of course there are real instances of rape, so how can you not have it? So this is the larger question in law, is that one, whether the provision itself 
is within the framework hmm. of the constitution that means it is correct constitutionally correct the right. second aspect is misuse in this context when the government comes in and gives an affidavit and the government goes ahead and says we want to reexamine it it opens up two issues one is looking at it from the executive or the legislative route as compared to it being dealt only on the judicial side so when the court has also accepted it i think we should view it as citizens as a positive move and right. all in all it's a move in the right direction so we need to await what is the final decision all right mr kohli appreciate your speaking to us on republic tv thank you for joining us I'd